Hey everybody, it's Joe from PocketNow.com with a special first look at what everybody's been wanting for an awfully long time. It's Android 2.1 Eclair running on the T-Mobile G1. Yes, it's finally been done and uh, I'm going to show you how to do it. So the first thing I've got, this is my wife's T-Mobile G1. Uh, I've already gone ahead and unlocked it and rooted it, did that long ago. And I have just now, using the Raw Dream V 1.6.2 recovery ROM, I've gone in and done an Android backup. So just in case something goes terribly, terribly wrong, I can get her back up to where she was before I started all this uh, without any problem at all. So what I've done is, of course, booted up into recovery mode to do that. On the G1, the way you do that is you shut down the phone, power it up, using the power button, then hold down the home button until you're brought up into your recovery menu. So you can see here I've just completed the backup. I am going to come down to flash zip from SD card and I have placed that on the SD card. It's called update CM 5.0.7 DS test 1. Important thing to note this is an experimental ROM. It is not a final release ROM. Uh, as of the time of this video, it's not available via the CM updater. That may change, but for now you have to download it directly from uh, www.cyanogenmod.com. Uh, and I'll have links to that in the article that accompanies this video. So from here we've got that selected. And I'm going to press the scroll button. And it asks if I want to do that. Remember this is a G1, so I have to press the home button to confirm. And it says that it's installing from the SD card, finding the update, opening the update, verifying the update, and it's going on and doing its thing. This is probably going to take a few minutes, so I'll let it complete, and we'll be right back. Okay, install from SD card is complete. That process took right around three minutes, so not too bad. Um, if you haven't done anything out of the ordinary, you're probably good to reboot at this point. If you've done an awful lot of customizations and whatnot, uh, or specifically if you're not coming from Cyanogen Mod 4.2.15 point something, uh, you may want to go ahead and wipe it. The article that Cyanogen posted said that you don't need to wipe if you're coming from 4.2.15.1, so I'm not going to. We're going to see how that works. Instead, we're just going to select menu option one, which is Reboot system now. Go ahead and do that. And let's see what she does. First thing is we've got our T-Mobile G1 boot screen. This is where you start biting your fingernails and waiting to see how everything is going. This screen can last for several minutes. It might just be there for 30 seconds and go away. Um, but don't be terribly concerned if it sticks around for quite a while. That's perfectly normal when you're going from one ROM to another ROM. It's got to do a lot of housekeeping um, and I could get into a lot of technical details about everything that it does but suffice it to say uh, Cyanogen and the rest of the people who contribute to this ROM are geniuses in what they do uh, to go through and optimize the way that packages are loaded to place things into various different folders whether it's uh, system apps, system data system cache, uh, how they've got the, the Dalvik caching set up, the, the tweaks that they have to the kernel, the kernel that's being used. Uh, in fact, Cyanogen says that the kernel being used here, which I believe is 0.33, uh, adds significantly to the speed of the device. Um, and his first impression was that running this ROM is faster than running the 4.2.15 ROM which is impressive. That was a pretty quick ROM, especially for this phone, which I mean, now the G1 is it's old uh, as far as technology goes. We've had an awful lot of updates to hardware, to, uh, to processors, the amount of RAM. Uh, just a lot of progress has happened since the G1 came out. And to know that we've gone from Android 1.5 when the T1, or excuse me, the T-Mobile G1 first came out, and other uh, of the HTC Dream series, all the way through 1.6, and now jumping up to 
and still being able to run most of the things that are built in to 2.1. Uh, we'll see here what's uh, what's been left out, but that that's just impressive. That speaks a lot not only of the hardware that's in these phones, but also in all the hard work that the developers uh, the, in the independent community are putting into developing the Android OS, the Android platform. Uh, you know, this isn't something that T-Mobile is saying, "Hey, let's uh, put this all together and let's pay these guys." You know, they're not on the payroll of Google or T-Mobile or any other carrier. Uh, most of these guys are doing it in their spare time, uh, which really speaks a lot to their character. So if you find value in this, I'm going to put in a plug to visit their websites and click on any ads that you feel are relevant to what you might be looking for. Um, or if they've got a donate button, go ahead and donate 5 10 bucks to them for their efforts just in appreciation for what they do. Uh, the more you donate to them, the more that you voice your appreciation the more likely they are to continue their development processes and to keep delivering good stuff that uh, you and I use. So back to the process here. You see we've got the Android uh, animated logo. This is the Cyanogen logo. I really like it. It's got a little Cyanogen Android guy on a skateboard waving at you. Uh, and you've got this reflection animation going across the Android word if that doesn't show up in the video. Uh, that lets you know that it's still thinking, it's still doing its thing. Um, and like I said before, this process usually takes several minutes, so to spare you that time, we're going to use the magic of video and skip all that, and I'll be back when I've got something fun to show you. Okay, so about another 2-3 minutes has passed since the last time I left you. Uh, no problems at all, and we're met with the Android 2.1 lock screen. That lets you easily mute or unmute and unlock your phone. This is behaving just a little bit sluggish, but with an older processor, I'd expect that. Um, I also haven't waited too long at that loading screen, so it's probably still running through some processes in the background. If we look, we've got the cyanogen style drawer which we can grab and pull up. You'll notice this is not the advanced drawer like uh, comes stock with 2.1, the Star Wars style drawer. It's just the traditional one, which I think is most likely for speed. Um, this obviously doesn't have your uh, 3D hardware acceleration built in, just has the regular 2D stuff. So for speed, it's probably not doing that. You can still see here, even with home screens that are pretty loaded up with widgets and apps, it's not too bad. Uh, the responsiveness is pretty good. Let's see what else we have. Go ahead and open up the browser here. And it's firing up Google. Not too bad now. What I'd like to show you here is the buzz icon. In the stock browser, you don't have access to this, at least not the last time I checked, because um, it doesn't support HTML5 all that well. The browser that comes with the Nexus One does show the widget, or the, uh, the panel, if you will, in the web browser. This is showing it just fine, so it looks like the web browser is all up to speed with uh, the latest and greatest stuff. So that is really cool. Let's uh, go in and look at the gallery. That's one of the things that everybody likes. So we'll come in and look at it. And uh, you'll notice here, this sure looks like it's the 3D gallery that comes with the Nexus. It's got your tip and your tilt. It's got the tiles that fly in. So that's really cool. It's still got your uh, camera icon in the corner. Real-time test here. Let's see how the camera works. Picture works just... well, that was kind of interesting. A uh, little bit of a video anomaly there, but the picture did take successfully. You can see there's the tabletop that I just took. So we're good to go. Um, go in and open up the settings. And everything looks good there. Flip over to camcorder. 
Look at the settings there. Well, so far, so good. Let's go back out home. And let's take a look now at our settings to see exactly what this phone is doing. Now you'll notice here this has also got the uh, the 2.1 style settings. I'm going to go into about phone just to see. It is an HTC Dream. Firmware version is 2.1 update 1. It is running kernel 2.6.33.3 cyanogen mod and the mod version is cyanogen mod 5.0.7-ds-test1 so there you go folks you can now run Android 2.1 with all of the Android 2.1 widgets that you want all the apps that didn't run on your old uh, Android running 1.6 you can now do that on your T-Mobile G1. So a first look at the Test 1 beta release, experimental release, of Cyanogen Mod ROM 5.0.7 for the T-Mobile G1. This is Joe Levi for PocketNow.com.